Hi, this video is about something uh, that sounds really profound that uh, Sam Altman said uh, recently, the OpenAI AI CEO, he said that the age of giant AI models is already over. Um, I think this statement is uh, taken out of context is, is a bit misleading because to me, um, and I, I saw a smaller, um, a, a kind of a smaller headline that I clicked on that made it seem even more salacious. It kind of, is, is he saying that it's just like chat GPT's done like it's not good anymore that's not what he's saying that's kind of what i what I, my first reading of it it's like oh we're not going to use them anymore no he's he, they're going to use the large language models what he really means by this is um it, is that they can't make they can't really grow the improvement of them by making them bigger that's that's the, the the short answer. There's a little bit more context I want to add as well, which is that this is this has been the philosophy of OpenAI from the beginning um, and for for quite some time. There's a uh, you know I, there, Andre Carpathy, uh, very famous in the AI world. Um, I believe he was uh, the the head of AI at Tesla, and then I think he's actually at OpenAI now. Um, I remember I watched several of his videos, and one of the things that he talked about was that number one, the code for these AI models over the last, basically since 2017, when Google released their Transformers paper, the code is very short and it really hasn't changed a whole lot. It's like I think 500 lines, which for code uh, is very very small. Um, and then he talks about sort of like the, I believe it was him that the the, the the strategy, the, the way to improve it is just make it bigger, you know, just keep making it bigger, add more parameters. Um, and parameters are sort of like neurons and to give context that they show it here in this article, uh, GPT-2 had 1.5 billion parameters. Uh, this is funny, tagline to be generated by artificial intelligence. I wonder if she, this is like an AI movie or, or series about AI. Anyway, 1.5 billion, and then GPT-3, 1.75 billion parameters, and it made it way, way better, and that was a large reason for the improvement. And then GPT-4, they didn't announce how many parameters there are in it, but it's it's supposed to be much bigger. Um, and so what he's saying is by adding more parameters or neurons, um, it, it's not going to improve the model. There's diminishing returns in that area and up to some point this is going to not give you more. I think another way of looking at this is also more data. It doesn't necessarily add improvements to the quality of, 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 the, of the model, but just in general, from a standpoint of like a data analysis, more data isn't always better. It doesn't always improve things. And, you know, just real quick aside, uh, if you think, well, why should I believe you about data? Basically, for the last 20 years, data has I've, been, I've done data from a theoretical and from a practical standpoint. Um, you know, I have, I have a master's degree in industrial engineering, which is closer to actually data science than it is than it is engineering, um, and, and it's where a lot of lots of statistics and analysis of huge, uh, weird data sets. <clears throat> and then you know, I worked at a semiconductor factory where there was uh, there's a lot of complicated data. You know, spreadsheets with tens of thousands of rows and, and dozens of columns and, uh, and I've worked there for about six years and then for the last about 11 years I've done SEO which is another kind of like practical data analysis it's very different than the semiconductor but uh, still uh, more data so I, I've been studying data it's been my jam for a very long time and it makes sense sometimes more data doesn't add a clearer picture uh, to, to the situation um, and so it, this, and they have talked about actually, this shouldn't come as a surprise, even though the headline is kind of like, whoa, um, this shouldn't come as a surprise because uh, this has been talked about for a while that number one, they're going to run out of data to crawl. Um, and it's not entirely accurate because more data is being created every day, more and more, and that, that rate of increase, that rate of new data is increasing <clears throat> over time. Um, but it certainly hasn't been increasing at the rate at which they have increased their models. Uh, but additionally, it, it doesn't necessarily um, help, again, help kind of clarify the situation. Let me, I think I've got a reasonable analogy. It's sort of like, imagine you're trying to draw like a 3D picture and you put in your first, and you can only do it with dots. You put it in with a, a handful of dots and you can see like that line of, you know, a guy on a motorcycle. So you kind of know what it is. And then you put in a bunch more dots and you get a lot more clarity. You can see, uh, more 
his facial expression. You can see that he's got like a bandage on his leg or whatever. Um, and then you put in more dots and you get a very clear picture. Now when you add more dots to the, to the picture, to the data set, there's no additional clarity or, or it's very minor, the clarity that is added to the situation. And I think this, this kind of uh, metaphor works for, for the, how they're dealing with the data and the parameters of you know, GPT-4 and beyond. Uh, because you know it does a lot of things really well right now and adding more data doesn't necessarily improve that it could actually take it back but also it's you know with each new date you know as you grow the data set let's say you go from here to here um, the, it's it's a smaller percentage of the total that you, what you add and so when you add more and more it's 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 just kind of you know it's it's getting close to like a and uh, kind of a baseline and adding something doesn't really, it's like a drop in the a, a bucket in the ocean. There's only so much uh, more, uh, there's only so so big that it can get, so many conclusions that it can, can really be taken from the data at some point. But also there's a, there's a flip side to this, which is that sometimes actually more data can be bad because um, it's not necessarily just about raw data. It's also about the right data in processing the data and interpreting the data. So you could actually potentially have a smaller model that's better than GPT-4. That is definitely possible. Um, and I think that they'll they'll get there. So what what is he, he says um, that we'll make it better in other ways. And this shouldn't come as a surprise um, to, to if you've been listening to him. I do recommend there's that Lex Friedman interview. It's two and a half hours with Sam Alton. Very, to me, riveting, hopefully to you as well. Um, where he kind of alludes to this already, and there's been a lot of talk about how like they're going to run out of data with GPT for you know, at GPT four or somewhere in that in that time, and so this is this is not surprising. But there is a big implication here, which is that maybe this takes you know because they've been adding they've been making the model better in other ways than adding data, but the main th thrust of where the improvement was coming from was just more data. So this might actually substantially slow down the, the development of the, the AI models because um, now they're going to have to find new ways to improve it. And it might take another five or ten years for them to find that new way. Um, or maybe just the GPT-4, which is pretty excellent, by the way, can only make minor changes for quite some time. Minor improvements. It is a little bit disconcerting to think that maybe they're, there's actually they're at a wall like now. Like it's already there. It is possibly why he's saying this. He's alluding to what's happening in the company that they're realizing, holy shit, like this thing isn't improving we, 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 anymore or it's improving very marginally for a huge cost, which they're saying, you know, building GPT-4 costs over a hundred million. And I think if you listen to how he says it, it's like well over a hundred million. So, you know, the idea of, of building GPT-5 and just that much bigger, you know, it costs over a billion dollars, maybe more if they could even do it. And they might not even be able to do it right now. This also implies to some degree that, that um, you know, like when people talk about AGI and the speed of change recently, um, that it might actually slow down quite a bit and that we might still be quite a bit far out from a super intelligent um, AI. And just in general, that uh, certain types of like broad, uh, um, can do all things type of AI models uh, maybe are at, will be at their limits for quite some time. The good news about this is I still think that uh, if you're looking to like be in the AI space, that there is a lot of different opportunity with AI, even without this, by doing what I would consider, what I think people are calling narrow models, which is basically the use case for them is narrowed down, which means that you need way less data um, to get a good result because the, the situations are, are much leaner, uh, much, much smaller and much more controllable and in that way um, you can there's still a lot of room to grow because if you had a gpt4 size model for something that let's say was um let's say an ai surgeon i don't know i'm just pulling that out there then then that could probably be really really freaking amazing way better than gpt4 is for any one specific thing so the conclusion from that is basically that even if uh open ai's development stalls and we don't see GPT-5 for like seven years, that that doesn't mean that the AI space is like stuck, uh, that there's not more that can be done. Um, I think it more implies um, for like some of the the big ambitious 
broad super AGI type things that they might actually be further away uh, because we might need a new uh, technological development. We might need something new to come along, something that's not a transformer or maybe it's like a next level transformer. Or maybe, maybe it's like another piece of technology that connects into the transformer and supports it and amplifies it or something like that. There's a, a lot of different possibilities uh, but the problem is that they don't know it. So this this strategy has kind of come to an end. That that's that's what he's saying with this. When he's saying it's come to an end, he sa- it really should say it, it. It's probably taken out of context. It really should say um, that the the strategy of building bigger and bigger models is over for him for OpenAI. <laughs> Maybe not for other companies, but because that was the strategy that has gotten them to where they are today. Anyway. Thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you ha- have any comments. If you think, if you agree with me or disagree with me, I'll put a link to this in the comments. Like if you like this video and subscribe for more awesome AI videos. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.